Robert, as you've reflected back and looked at film of this Florida team, what, what do you think has gone wrong down the stretch? Yeah, you know, I, I put on the tape thinking uh, I was going to watch a team that, you know, wasn't given much effort, uh, wasn't executing at a high level. And uh, I was pleasantly surprised, you know, uh, I, I watched Emily Jones go through his progressions, make throws, uh, use his legs, run the ball well. Uh, Jacob Copeland, wide receiver, make, making nice catches. Justin Shorter uh, doing the same. And then on defense, they were swarming to the ball. I mean, uh, you know, Missouri's running back, uh, one of the best in the country, right? And uh, they held him to 11 yards rushing in the first half. Uh, you know, obviously he finished with 146 yards and, and broke it up in the second half. But for three quarters, they executed at a high level. Um, so I don't know what, what quite it was that you could put your finger on. But uh, for some reason, the ball has not bounced their way. You know, we saw them earlier in the year almost beat uh, Alabama, uh, and they were ranked really high early on in the season. And uh, just as of late, it's all falling apart for them, and that's why now you have Greg Knox as the interim head coach and, and Dan Mullins out of there. Robert Griffin the third joining us. Robert, I, I've asked you this before, but I, th I feel like you, you have such an interesting perspective on the Heisman having uh, done what you did. Uh, a decade ago and, and win it really and it feels like you I felt like you you won it late uh, as you as we look at the field now we're really only two weekends away from having to vote it seems like uh, it, it's now down to a, two to three people with CJ Stroud and, and Bryce Young uh, who else do you think could still factor into this yeah I'm with you Paul it's, it's been an interesting race uh, you know, we saw Matt Corral go out last night and, uh, and play well, uh, but nothing that would make you say, okay, that was a Heisman moment for him. Uh, but we did see C.J. Stroud and, and Bryce Young have really just unbelievable performances last week. And uh, I think it's, it's really down to those two guys uh, as to who's going to, to win it all. Uh, and it's going to be this weekend, a championship weekend that decides that. So I don't know if we've ever had the Heisman go this far uh, or this late into the season, as in who's the favorite, who's going to win it. Uh, the year that we won it at Baylor, yeah, we, we stormed down the, the, the path the last, you know, five, six games of the year uh, and really turned it on. Uh, but we didn't have a championship game to play, so we kind of sat out that weekend. And uh, this year, you know, I just look at it and I'm like, man, uh, C.J. Stroud, the way they just, uh, you know, dismantled uh, Michigan State and, and then Bryce Young going out and throw for 500 yards and, what was it, six touchdowns? I mean, uh, five touchdowns. These guys were, were just on another planet. And I think right now those are the guys that, that are leading the way, and uh, it's going to come down to how they play these last two weeks. Whoever plays the best, I believe, will win the Heisman. It seems like, Robert, that Stroud certainly has the moment this week. It's the biggest – probably it's, it is the biggest game of the year. And then next week we will have another one of those biggest games of the year. So do, do you think it's, it is in the moment that, that both need or it's just you know, consistency in winning the game too? Yeah, I don't think winning is going to be enough. You know, I, if they lose the game, you know, it, it just sucks. You hate to say it, but it kind of puts a, a cap on their Heisman uh, possibilities. But when you talk about C.J. Stroud and the game that they have this week uh, against Michigan, He's got to shine, right? He's got to play at a, at a super high level, uh, you know, have another one of those games like he did against Michigan State because, yes, Bryce Young might not have that opportunity this week, but then the following week he is going to have that opportunity. Uh, and it's really going to come down to who has the biggest moment and the biggest splash plays. If they throw for 500 yards and, a, and an interception and lose, it's not going to matter. People aren't going to like that taste in their mouth uh, of going and voting for them after they see them play uh, and lose a game. Uh, so I think CJ's got to maximize this week, play really, really well, and then hope that he, that Bryce Young doesn't play better uh, in the FCC championship game than he did uh, against Michigan. Robert Griffin III, many, many thanks. We'll be watching tomorrow. Always appreciate your time, Robert. Hey, Paul, I got, I got one more thing for you. Sure. Okay. Now, you, you talked about who, who's Florida's uh, next head coach should be. And I got an outlier for you, if you have a little bit of time. Absolutely. Yeah, so my outlier is this. Uh, I think the Gators should hire Tim Tebow. I think they have to think outside the box for their next head coaching hire. 
And the, the word out there was that Dan Mullen wasn't in love with recruiting. He wasn't in love with the process of those things. But who's going to really out-recruit Nick Saban, Kirby Smart, and Jimbo Fisher, right? So if you throw Tim Tebow in there, surround him with a structure, have about three or four previous head coaches on his staff uh, to help him figure out the vision of his program, that's going to bring excitement to the Florida Gators. It's going to have players be intrigued, excited about going into Gainesville and recreating that culture that they had oh so long ago. And we've seen that structure with a guy like Deion Sanders before. Now, I know Tebow has no coaching experience, but coaches don't have to be X's and O's guys. They have to be motivators, right? And that's what Tim Tebow does best. He motivates guys, he leads, and he can be a figurehead for the Florida Gators moving forward to say, that's our guy. Not only is he going to recruit, but he's going to inspire you to be better. And I think that's more so what they need as opposed to one of these other coaches who's going to come in and try to rebuild the program from the ground up, uh, but might not be able to out-recruit those guys. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.